Hey Dave, your old friend Greg here. Congratulations for reaching 100 episodes of Beyond Jaws. I enjoyed being part of it, and I've really enjoyed watching many of the other episodes. Keep up the great work. Hey everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the Beyond Jaws podcast, where we are celebrating our 100th episode. Today's episode, we're going to be going over a little bit of the history of the Beyond Jaws podcast, because there's some things that I don't even remember what we did, because we were able to accomplish so much. So I can't wait uh, to get into the episode. And I'm here with my co-host, uh, Dr. David Ebert. Dave, how's it going? Oh, it's awesome, man. I'm pretty pumped up. We got our hit 100 episodes of our podcast, and uh, that's, that's a pretty good accomplishment, I think. So, and I believe is <laughs> probably one of the most um, popular shows, because I don't think too many shark po- episodes of podcasts have reached 100 episodes, so I'm, I think we should have a lot to be yeah. happy about there. And uh, our, the episode's grown, as we'll talk about today, and we have a few guests on that, were, uh, uh, that come on and give us a little bit of a shout out here. We'll talk a little bit about the podcast history and kind of how we got this whole thing started and how you and I first kind of came to know each other and all that. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm looking it's forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking, yep. Yep. Good looking, I'm looking forward, forward to, it. to it as well. This is going to be a lot of fun. I think I think this is, you know, one of those episodes, you know, we talk about the 100s. It's always a big uh, milestone in a, in a podcast because I've been podcasting for almost a decade now. And when you reach that 100th, or every time you reach 100th, uh, you're, you, you feel something a little special. Because with a lot of times with, with podcasters, it doesn't matter what your topic is that you're talking about. It could be sharks, it could be the ocean, it could be uh, you know learning how to play the ukulele. It doesn't matter. If you can reach 100, you've probably outperformed or out published most of the podcasts that are out there because I think there was a study done a couple of years ago that looked at the total number of podcasts that have been launched and there were like 4 million or so. The active podcast at that time was 400,000. You know, so it just goes to show that a lot of people will start a podcast, realize how difficult it is and how time consuming it is, and then realize that, hey, you know what, maybe this isn't for me, which is fine. You know, that that's, that's up to everybody else. But Sometimes, you know, when you get that hundredth, you, you kind of know you've outworked a lot of the, the, the people who have, who have been on there. Um, and, you know, shout out to all the other Shark podcasts who are approaching 100 or have hit 100 because we were trying to look it up to see if we were the only ones. But there are some great um, podcasts out there that, you know, deal with sharks in a, in a very different way that we do. And they're fantastic. We listen to, to all of them you know, at, at some point in time, it's kind of hard to listen to, to all of them because there are quite a few, but it's, it's great to see them approach, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80. And if they get to a hundred, that's even better. You know, we love our other, our fellow shark podcasters out there and, 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 and ocean podcasters and wildlife podcasters. Cause God knows Dave, we need more people talking mm-hmm. about the ocean to get more people yep. aware and, and, and have the education. I mean, I think we could, we could see it in, in some of our political leaders right now in the lack of information they have on science and, and conservation. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to be able to have yep. people listen to us and just be like, Hey, you know what? Like we, we can teach you a little something or you can learn a little something from from each and every one of our guests that we have on. And I think that's, uh, that's something to, yep. to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, Andrew, we, we kind of, we started this whole idea of like, you know, kind of want to do something a little different in that. Well, how, cause, cause I certainly get this question a lot and you probably get it as well. Like, well, how do you get into doing marine science? How do you become like a shark researcher, science communicator? And so, you know, and like, you know, we want to basically tell, have people tell their, tell their story, tell, talk about their journey and try to get a lot of people from, from just different stages of their careers. I mean, I think originally we came up with this idea, this whole concept of the, the beyond jaws podcast. Uh, it was uh, my initial thing was let's get some of the more senior people on there so they could tell their story in their own words, because, you know, oftentimes you go, you'll, somebody will pass away an older researcher, you know, and, and mm-hmm. they'll know the name, and yet they won't, they won't, well, you know, they won't know anything other than what the, I hate to say the shark obituary or the fish obituary that's been written about them versus like having them be able to share the story in their own words. And that's kind of morphed into like, well, that's great. We'll get the, some of the more senior people on there. And certainly our first, our first, uh, you know, half dozen or so episodes 
focused on some of the people that have had that have had careers and gone through that. But then as we expanded on, we went to some looked at some of the other uh, things to talk about. Well, let's find some people, let's talk to people in their middle of their career, or some early career people. Like, well, how'd you? get started why'd you get interested in it and it's and the younger people are kind of funny be fun because they can tell their story now at this point in their career you know whether they're doing a graduate degree or their early postgraduate and then they come back like in 10 or 20 years and see like well where they are now and so i think that's kind of cool for for some of the for some of the early career people to be able to come back at a later time and and see what they said cuz now we have it on we have it on tape literally to see what they're what they're what they're doing and what their thinking was um and so i think that's kind of a, a cool niche that we found and and we've kind of tried to work on it going forward I, I think we've dispelled a lot of the, the, the biggest myths, I think, in, in marine science in general for careers is that everything just falls into place. You know, you go to university, you do graduate work, and everything is just, let's just, it's, it's, a, straight, it's a straight path to, to your career. And, and we know now <laughs> that, oh, I mean, you and I have known that for a while. That's not true. And, but people just don't believe it until you, you see and hear it from a lot of the people who've been in it for, you know, 30, 40 years and, and seeing their career meander, uh, whether they were in, you know, shark biology and shark science the entire their career or what a lot of people have gone back and forth between, you know, sharks maybe maybe fisheries uh maybe aquaculture like you did or you know science communication like i did like it goes back and forth a lot of the times and it, it really just comes up with what's the opportunity that that presents yourself what's your life situation at the time you know it's it's uh it it meanders and and no path is the right path and no path is the wrong path it's yeah. just whatever path that that, well, that you get and i think that's what's really important when you when you hear these these stories yeah i mean i think that you know like one thing i think is pretty consistent is nobody has as you just said a direct path it's and people have had to do a lot of interesting uh jobs along the way uh, different things they just they, but they stayed but i think the one thing is they all stayed focused where they wanted to ultimately get to and they had a lot of setbacks, a lot of things. You know, some people came to, you know, some people, you know, like myself, knew early on, like I'm going to do sharks. You know, at the time they're five years old. Other people mm -hmm. came to mm -hmm. the came to sharks later on. Um, and I think another thing too with our podcast is that we have we don't just have scientists on. We have people from the conservation. We have science communicators. We've had a number of people that do filming. You know, we've had you know a number of people like Joe Romero, Chris Fallows, people that are. Uh, both behind and in front of the camera for Shark Week and for the Nat Geo Shark Fest and other programs to talk about, to just talk about it. Because well, one thing you hear a lot of is, like, how do you become a wildlife photographer or filmmaker? Yeah. And so having the, so having some of these people on to talk about their journey, it all revolves around they all wanted to eventually get into doing marine science, or not marine science, be able to like capture marine science either on film or on audio or in different different areas, so I think that was one of the things that we we want to step outside just the pure science or just the pure conservation, but to get people from other other backgrounds, and um, and so it's been kind of kind of really neat in that in that re respect in that respect for for the for our, for a series we've been doing. Yeah, and you know it's it's interesting because we we've we've experimented over that time too. I think we've we've stayed true to the overall goal, and that's to you know, you know, share the stories of, of different researchers, share the stories of different conservationists that with, are within the shark or conservation field, like in that area, shark science or, or shark conservation. Um, but we started experimenting right right from the beginning. We did our first number of interviews. You were the you were technically, I guess, you were our official first, first guest. Um, yeah. But but you know, it, technically, because you know, we want to yeah. tell your story as well. Um, but you know, we 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 kind of came in right off the bat with Greg Skomal as our first yep. uh, as our first you know episode. Um, and since then, he's done two episodes and I think a bonus episode as well right. as we were going through yeah. that. But our, like, you know, he was first on in July of 2021, right around Shark Week, which is perfect, yeah. obviously, to to launch and, and put out um, some episodes. And, and obviously, you know, you you've known Greg for for a long time. Ever. Um, yeah. He was he's always a great guest, you know, telling us sort of the behind oh, yeah. the scenes of, of some of the stuff he's done. I remember that first episode we did talk about Shark Week, what it's like to be on Shark Week, some of the ins and outs that 
that scientists uh, coming up in the field should know more about when they approach, uh, you know, Shark Week or get approached by production companies to do Shark Week episodes, as well as any other, you know, big TV episodes like Shark Fest is, that's, that's developed since then. Um, and of course, you've been on them too, so you can share your stories as well. Um, but then, you know, we, we also got to talk to him on that bonus episode of, of uh, yep. you know, the, the book talk- the Chasing Chasing Shadows with uh, Rhett yep. Talbot as well that he co-wrote that with. Um mm-hmm. That was just that was just amazing to have him, you know, like as you as you mentioned, our first number of episodes were sort of dictating the history, of, especially of that Jaws generation. Um, yep. You know, do you want to just talk a little bit about the Jaws generation yeah. and a little bit about Greg and why it was important to have him on? Yeah, like I said, the first sort of six seven episodes we had on there, we started off with Greg, and these were people. These were all we all kind of came up together. Uh, you know, myself and Greg, we had Lisa Natanson on. We had uh, Sarah Fowler uh, and uh, Dominic Didier. We had we had uh, Gavin Naylor on, and so we had a number of a lot of these people we had on there. They were we all kind of came of age in the in the eighties, and and so like they had uh, um, you know with Greg and Lisa, uh, and Kurt, you know again we all knew each other going back to when we were all graduate students together. Uh, you know some we you know you know somebody like a uh, uh, Gavin Naylor for example was on one of the first episodes we had. You know he. You know, we have we've had you know he actually was a student of Eugenie Clark's, and um, as, as anybody that listens to the episodes know, we typically have on some of the uh, 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 we have on the whenever there's a winner for the American Lazarbrank Society of the Eugenie Clark Award, we typically have them on the podcast. And so, most recently, we had Grace Castleberry on there, who was the most recent winner. But we've had you know we had uh, Britt Finucci on. As on an episode, she was back in uh, May of 2022 on episode 25. She came out and talked about her having uh, received the Eugenie Clark Award and uh, talk about her research. And we also had Britt on more recently uh, uh, in April of this year uh, on a bonus episode to talk about the uh, recent article she had that was on the cover of Science Magazine. Um, but a lot of people, the reason you have somebody like a Gavin Naylor on is that most of these people, even though they might be a recipient of the Jeannie Clark Award, they have no idea that Gavin Naylor, who's been a longtime member of the American Lazarus Rank Society, actually was a graduate student of hers. And so you can share stories like that. Right. And that's really yeah. kind of the essence of the whole reason that we wanted to do the podcast is to be able to have people on um, like Gavin uh, and, and the others. And, and of course, Greg Scomel, uh, who's never short of stories to tell and stuff and some of his adventures uh, back in the day. And so they can, there's a connect, a business to kind of set up a connection between, you know, the, uh, you know, the current, you know, people starting out and some of the maybe mid career, some of the earlier, uh, uh, people have been around for a while and then, but they can be like a link, like in Gavin's nation, it's a connection yeah. to, um, to Jeannie Clark, you know, recently, uh, you know, Leonard Campagno passed away and I did, we've done a couple things, uh, by talking about Leonard, having been a graduate student of Leonard's. Um, and talk about what it was like. And I knew Leonard for about 40 years and over 40 years, actually. Yeah. And so to be able to talk yeah. about like, well, what it was like work with Leonard Campagna, I was like, well, sit down, buddy, and pull up, a have a beer and <laughs> pull up a chair and let's talk. And uh, so it makes a connection. And I think it's important, you know, the for people to know the history of the field they're, they're into and what they're doing. And mm-hmm. so, you know, a lot of the people we had, like I said, the first sort of group of people were all, literally pioneers in the field well i think also too yeah these pioneers become heroes of people who you know read their papers and watch their careers and know you know what academic institutions they're at or government institutions they're at and they see the the people and they you you know i've we've we've probably all done it where you read a, a number of research papers by a particular person and then when you first interact with them, you just don't know what to do because they're, they're celebrities in, in the field. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, like I'm so intimidated. I have imposter syndrome and so forth. But then, you know, one of the benefits of doing the podcast was to have them on and you can hear their voice. You can hear their personalities. And a lot of the times, you know, for me, you know, hearing and meeting some of the people that we've been interviewing, it, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. They've been on TV. They've published numerous papers. They've done some amazing things in, in the field of sharks science and conservation and it just kind of brings it everybody to like an equal playing field as they as they would think too you know what i mean where they're, they're easy to interact with you know they're they're just regular people 
and you get to hear their voice, you get to connect with them on a deeper level. And that's what I've always loved about podcasts. It's raw. It doesn't have to be professionally done. Uh, it's it's one of those things where you just hear the person. We don't it, we don't edit out a, any of the the interviews unless there's a connection issue or something like that. So it's you you get you, this is what you get. This is who they are as as guests and as, as scientists and conservationists. And you hear the passion in their voice. A lot of times from a journal article or maybe an article in a. a you know, society magazine or something like that, you don't get that passion coming through that tone. And so you're able to get that through the podcast, which is, which is a lot of fun. And then I think that's what you and I have enjoyed over the last, you know, four years to be able to do, um, to get that, to get that off. I thought that was great. Right. And, you know, we started off, we mentioned we started off in July of 2021. And, you know, right after we, you know, we did a series of uh, people that have been around kind of from the Jaws generation, as you mentioned. But then we we, we, we went into, uh, we, I, I actually, with uh, uh, Pete Kind and Paula Carlson, who have also been on the podcast, we did a, uh, uh, the three of us uh, uh, held, uh, coordinated, ran a, uh, a symposium. It was a global symposium on yeah. wedgefish and guitarfish, which are probably the most critically endangered group of, of, uh, of sharks or rays in the world. And we did a series of, and we did a series of, of, of seven episodes, had 29 people on, which was a lot of work for us, but it was, but, it, but everybody was able to come on and talk a little bit about their, about, share a little bit about their story. And of course we, you know, everybody on there, we could have on again for a full on episode and, and will eventually. Um, but we had, you know, we were able to have some people on there and a couple of people we had on there was, uh, Adriana Gonzalez Pastana, who, uh, Talked, it was from Peru and talked a bit about some of the work she's doing. And then, of course, we had uh, Benaya Simone, uh, who was on episode 13 from the same time. She's from Indonesia. Both are now doing their PhDs at Charles Darwin University under Peter Kind. And uh, and so, and I actually just had a, a great experience in in Indonesia uh, with both of them on that. And they'll be on, they're going to be on a future episode here again. Um, but it was very it was very you know for them from Peru, from Indonesia, and be able to come on a, a podcast that has a has a global reach, I think is really in, helpful. And, and I think that, in, and I encourage people to go back and listen to that because a lot of the people that were, we young people we had on those symposium podcasts, it was their first ch- podcast experience and it was the first time they had a chance to speak to an international audience. Uh, you know, we have, we have yeah. people who have had downloads from over 140 countries and we had we've had guests on from over forty different countries, which I think there's probably not too many Sharky podcasts that can say they have, you know, had guests on from forty different countries, or over forty countries. And so, and and Adriana and I are a couple of a couple of examples of that. Um, can talk about their experiences, and again, I'm sure in the future they'll be able to go back and listen to what they said at the time. Um, but the other yeah, part of that, from a science communication standpoint, Andrew, and you could comment more on this, but here we're running this symposium that within the shark community was fairly well uh, advertised, but with the podcast, this kind of this, this synergetic uh, uh, complement to it, we're able to get out to a more global audience, to people even outside the field that mm. want to learn about these yes. groups. And I don't, I'm not aware of anybody that's ever done that. And I think that's what's kind of cool about what we do is we've been, being you and I doing it, we come up with some innovative things to do and some try some stuff. Some stuff works, and I think that worked really well, and some stuff maybe not so much. But yeah. at least we're able to try some things. And that, that podcast we did with the symposium, I think, was was generally very well rece- received. And can I, yeah, yeah it, I think it was too. I think... I've been a, a, a long believer and supporter of sharing these symposiums with sort of a, a different audience. There's a lot of information that is passed on through those symposiums. It's always great to hear from each of the contributors to this, like the presenters that we, that we interviewed, uh, and have them, you know, talk about what they've done you know, in terms of contribution, what they're going to be talking about at the symposium. Because, you know, our audience is not all just scientists. It's it's everybody. It's a makeup of, of a number of different people, shark enthusiasts, I would say. And to be able to bring that information of a symposium that you wouldn't normally get access to, where it would be written up as a technical report that would may not be of interest to shark enthusiasts or may not get distributed to shark enthusiasts, 
now we have it in a way where you hear it directly from the person, like you're in the, the audience yourself. And it's not in a presentation mode. They're in a relaxed mode. They're talking about some of the cool things they did. Uh, and it's amazing. But Dave, I, I don't know if you remember the amount of work we put on to do those episodes. <laughs> there was, I think, what is it, seven episodes and 20, you were talking about before, 29 different people on each episode, mm-hmm. or on, on the the total of seven. So that averages about three to four 20 to 25 yep. minute interviews we did for each of those episodes. Yep. We decided to, to you know, put it in, condense it into seven episodes. The amount of work that we did for that, and we were talking True. to people all over, like Bangladesh, South Africa. I think we did uh, Sri, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Point, like, yeah, like it was, it was everywhere. And I remember just different yep. time zones. We were juggling and we were going on mm-hmm. and we were trying to remember where these go. And But it was fun. it was so much fun to learn. Yep all of these different uh you know just just the different information that's coming out of of a, of these sharks that not much is known about right yeah no and i think and i think a thing that you touched on like you know a, a lot of the, a lot of these things tend to be very like north american centric or western european centric and yet yeah. we have people on from you know uh, we've, like you said we have people on from bangladesh from sri lanka from the uae from uh, Tanzania, Mozambique, South Africa, Namibia, Angola, mm-hmm. uh, all over Latin America. And we actually have a, we've actually developed quite a good following in Latin America now because we we feature a lot of people uh, from from Central and South America um, who come on the show. You know, we had we had you know uh, Francisco uh, Concha Poncho as we know him by mm-hmm. uh, was on an episode yeah. in, in March of 2023, episode 42. And if you want to catch a funny, a real funny guy, who's a, he's a professor <laughs> at the University of Val, Valparaiso. Um, he's a great, he's a great guest, and he, he knows everybody. And he he just shared what is you know like a lot of the types of research going on in um, in South America and in Chile there. And and so you know here's a guy that had a chance to reach out and connect with people. Um, you know, and so it's been really wonderful to to just get these people from different countries. Uh, and we have to say we have a good following in South America and Central America, just because we have yeah. we have a lot of people on from those episodes uh, to talk about, to, to share their story and talk about their journey. And you find out even in these countries, most of these people, no one's had a very straight um, trajectory in how they got to where they were. And uh, um, and of yeah. course, uh, one of the things that's kind of funny is sometimes after we ha- interview some people, we'll be off air talking. And I'll find some little nugget about them, and I'm like, oh, man, I wish I'd have known that for the episode. We should have recorded that. Yeah. We should have recorded that um, because that would have been, that'd have been really good to, to, to include oh, in yeah. the episode. For sure. Um, oh, yeah. So it's, it, was, it was pretty good to, to be able to like, uh, get on there and talk about some of the people. Um, you know, Some of the people, like we've had some young people on, like uh, Josh Moyers, who's a, a, a lecturer uh, at, uh, I think it's Yale University, actually. Um, and he Yale, talked yeah. about yeah yeah it was Yale and he talked about the shark mook uh, which there was a thing that him and Willie Bemis who's also been on the episode uh, podcast been, talked about yeah. it was a, it was an out it was an educational thing that they're able to communicate with people from all over the world and uh, it was a really good program and I I uh, uh, and so being able to have someone like Josh on who's just kind of launching his career and of course Willie who's kind of at more of the I hate to say I don't like to say the tail end for those of us that are kind of at the tail end of our kind of the latter part of our career but um, <laughs> but it, you kind of get that have that the dynamic golden years. Of, they're in the golden the years. golden the golden years yeah exactly um, but uh, have Josh come on there and share his uh, thoughts and everything with the uh, uh, on the shark mook and where his career is going he's going to be another one that's going to be great to have on again in the future and see where it's gone, you know, or, or see where his career is going and how it's going and, uh, and yeah. share some of his stories. So again, that's some of the difference, uh, the, the kind of the cool things that it's nice to have on some of these people. And again, he's another one that, you know, he doesn't, you know, he's in, you know, being North America, he gets a little more opportunity, but again, some of the people we have on don't have much opportunity and especially, I was talking about, especially going on with the with the English uh, speaking community. You know, a number of the people we had on, um, even just this year, we had on uh, uh, Elisa Areno from uh, Guatemala. We've had uh, uh, Maria mm-hmm. Cristina Doni, uh, who's from originally from mm-hmm. Uruguay, who also works in a, in is a professor in Brazil. I think it's one of the first sort of English speaking uh, podcasts yeah. they've ever been on. I know for sure it was for Cristina. 
and they just don't be they don't get invited on many of these things and they're both very accomplished women well and i think well, and I, yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think it takes also a lot of courage for uh, people whose English is not their first language to come on an English speaking podcast and be able to communicate the, you know, the way they've been able to do that and, and to put themselves out there. I think that is something that I know I never thought about before we started this podcast and then seeing them come on um, and they did a great job. Every every single mm-hmm. one of them did a great job in, in coming on and telling us, and it's, it's allowed us to share their story, uh, which is which is really nice that they shared their story with us and and the audience because we don't get to hear from them as you mentioned that often. But can I also talk a little bit about some of the groups that you know the groups within the shark world that we've been able to share. Um, so for instance, like Lindsay Marshall and, and Mark D- mm-hmm. Dando who have been on the podcast, they're, they're illustrators. We never really mm-hmm. get to talk about what goes into book illustrations and textbook illustrations and digital illustrations and how sort of that market just kind of builds up. Right. And, and yeah, we don't hear from, from people like that. And we're able to kind of get an idea. There are people out there who are really great artists and they want to know how to get into that type of career. We've been able to, to share their stories and they've been able to share them with people who are looking forward to, to starting their career in that as well. And, yeah. and even just being like, if you're new to this, if, if you're new to illustrations and you don't know anybody else who's done those types of illustrations, where do you go? How do you begin? You don't want to just repeat you know, the same thing, the same mistakes that they did, they can provide you with, you know, a little bit of mentorship through their story, or even you can reach out to them afterwards because we always put the connections to there as well. I think that right. was, that was always great. And then there's also the, um, which I thought, you know, I never, I never thought we were going to do this, but when we started to do this, it was a lot of fun is talk about sort of the shark like productions that were done in the behind the scenes so we had like mm-hmm. andy casagrande on we had jesse calazi who who's been on the podcast mm-hmm. uh we had uh, joe romero who've been on um chris and I, i'm missing a, a, a bunch but we've chris, chris Fallows, Fallows, jeff, kerr, been on. jeff yeah. kerr yep jeff kerr yeah yeah so like we've had and we've gotten a uh, sort of an indication and in a behind the scenes look at how you begin a career like that? Where does it go? How do you even get like a little bit of that, take your personality and be an on camera camera person, you know, and yeah. and develop that. And I think it's, it's really interesting just to see the different backgrounds of people, where they came from, where they go. Um, you know, the fact that Joe Romero, Romero uh, from, from Portugal originally, when he came to the U S learned English through Godzilla movies of all things, yeah. like you know, and, and got into the big monster movies and stuff. And I think that's one of the episodes, Dave, where after the recording, he was showing us his like collection of of the different yeah. monsters he had in the background, which would have been really fun to to be able to show on camera yeah. during during a recording. But we were like, damn it, we should have just we should have kept going. But should have rolled the camera for that. Yeah. Showing the yeah, I think showing the niches within the science world, the shark science world and conservation mm-hmm. world is, is really cool to, to bring to an audience. Um, yeah. And, and then we're going to continue to do that, I think, uh, oh, yeah. you know, with people um, who, who now, like even like people who have been big in social media, you know, and, and big influencers, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. um, who are who who are developing their career at the same time and showing people what it's like to go through a, a PhD like Jalen Myers, who's on episode mm-hmm. 61, like uh, in December yeah. of 2023, she was like a huge fan of the podcast and she kind of came on and gave her story, which, which is mm-hmm. great. And we've been getting to know her uh, uh, throughout that. So I think it's uh, it's a lot of fun to show sort of the different areas of like growing areas, like in terms of social media, you know, video production and and doing a, a production like a high end yeah. production, like we, we talked to Forrest as well, right right off the bat. Yeah. Those have been always the, the fun areas to get into the illustrators, right. um, and even the book writers too. Like you sharing your stories of, of book writing as well mm-hmm. um, as as Greg Skolmol and others who have been on to be able to say, hey, look, we've we've done this pretty yeah. cool stuff. So I yeah, think it's pretty we cool. had yeah we've had Dean Grubbs on to talk about the books he's done. We've had his uh, um, yep. Uh, his his co-author Dan Abel uh, was on recently uh, to talk mm-hmm. about one of his books, and of course they had a bit of a funny story that I met Dan in a yeah yeah I met Dan in a bar in Catalina Island about forty years ago <laughs> uh, with Lisa Natanson. So um, now, if you want to know more, you have to go back and listen to the ep- that particular episode. Yeah, um, 
But you know, we had but you know some of the people on, like you know, someone like uh, we had Jesse Colazzi on, and he's like he does the editing. I mean, everything you see on there, he does all. He's yeah. one of the guys who's bought kind of literally behind the scenes, um, and he works. He yeah. does a lot of stuff with Forrest Galani, who's another friend of the podcast. And of course, yeah. Forrest is out there, and the complete opposite, where he's he's basically the host and you know main person on the. He's had his own TV series, and he's done does a number of these Shark Week shows, and he's obviously on the other extreme. He's out in front there, in front of the camera. Uh, all the time doing the stuff, but then it's Jesse who takes the stuff and does all the editing behind the scenes that puts it all yeah. together. And the music. And the music. Yes, that was a big... Th- yes. There are some insights, again, if you're... It's a whole area I, I never... Th- well, I've been... Because I've done some of the shows, I got a little bit of insight, but I really... Having them on, I even learned a lot just hearing them talk about just how much time and energy goes into yeah. doing these uh, doing these uh, episodes. I mean, it takes them months and months and he only does like yeah. one or two a year. And I didn't really think about that, just how much time and energy it takes to be able to do one of these episodes. And so Jesse yeah, really provided a lot of insight. And I, uh, yeah, well, plus he was just, he was just a great guest. He was one of those guys, they need to put him in front of the uh, camera here sometime and let him like just I turn him so. loose. Uh, I think so. Yeah, just uh, a shout out to Forrest. <laughs> if you have, you have, next time you have Jesse out in the field, uh, you might have to put him on camera for a little bit to, uh, capture some of his personality it was pretty it was really good to have him on and uh and to be able to and to be able to show, highlight some of that stuff um and then uh yeah so i think so i think it's it's been really it's been a great opportunity and a great a vehicle to be able to share some of the stuff with people yeah. and again i think i think i know for me doing science all the time it's like i love doing it but getting to know some of the people kind of their behind the scenes and what they're doing yeah. uh is really kind of it's my favorite is, part yeah, oh, totally. It is. It is absolutely. It's absolutely one of the favorite things to be able to do, and I think we've been able to help connect people too. They kind of come on. They listen to oh, what somebody tell their story, and then you know they feel like they get to know them. I think on a almost on a personal level too. So they feel like they can. If you 100%. run into some of these people, if you're if you're a young person in the field, you run into at a conference, go up and say hi to them. You know, you now that you know a little yeah. bit about about some of these people, and and everything, and and I hope. I'm kind of hoping like, you know, we, we have like you know, every four years, we have like a Sharks International. I'm kind of hoping with our podcast now that we're at 100 episodes and growing that we'll be able to start help people connect when they go to these some of these international conferences. They can connect yeah. with a lot of these people they've been, we've had on our podcast. And uh, so I'm really, Agreed. really. You even you know, do a couple excited. of live episodes there at the conferences as well. That's, that's yeah. I think that's the place to be where you get all the That'll content one that thing. we need. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and I got you know we got to also give a give a, a real uh, a big shout out to you know with the Save Our Seas Foundation, which has been a tremendous, really helped get us off the ground initially with with the initial sort of seed funding to get us going, and you know just want to thank you know uh, uh, initially it was uh, Michael Scholl was the executive director initially approaching that, then um, he left and uh, uh, James Lee came in and James has been a super supportive of us uh, as well as uh, Sandrine. Sandrine Griffiths uh, and Jade Schultz and of course Isla Hodgson who has who does the uh, Shark World of Sharks podcast for Save Our Seas it was you know very very good for them to uh, appreciate them for helping us get off the ground and get going um, which has kind of led to where we are today and from you know from initially starting out as just audio only now we've got our own YouTube channel so I guess guess uh, you know uh, for, to Save Our Seas thank you guys so much you guys really helped helped get the get our whole podcast up and going yeah absolutely i mean that's that's the you know it's it's always the people not only the people who've been guests who have helped you know share their stories but also save our seas who's who's helped us start off they provided us funding for the first couple of years which was great um and and now we're off and running and we've been off and running for the last couple of years and and it's been it's been absolutely uh phenomenal to to be able to continue this journey um, you know, we, we, we're going to continue on, Dave, right? We're going to continue on with our regular episodes, um, yep. you know, sort of helping people share their stories and, and, and learning from them. And hopefully we all learn from each of those stories. Um, and we're going to be kicking it off the 101st episode with uh, Alexandra McInturf uh, from the Big Fish Lab at Oregon State University. That was uh, yep. that was a great interview. Looking forward to, for people to hearing that in the next episode. Um, and and of course, like like you said, you know we're on we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. 
Um, we're on YouTube. We're on all the podcast apps, audio podcast apps, as well as Spotify video now. We, we started to post our videos on Spotify. We're on YouTube. Um, we're pretty much everywhere you can listen to a podcast or any of our content, um, and it's always great. And so always check those out, you know, uh, share those with, with people that you think would enjoy hearing about um you know, the, the, the different aspects of shark science and conservation, the different careers. And, of course, we, we almost forgot, too, we've been doing some bonus episodes of sort of yep. timely things that have come out. You know, we, we did a doc, uh, we did a, a, uh, uh, an episode on the report of ocean white tips. Uh, you know, we did, um, mm-hmm. like you said, your your dedication and, and sort of uh, going over and, and, and paying respects to uh, Dr. Lena Capano. Um, and we've done a number of ever, other episodes where people have, have done something. So always check out and, and come back, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, uh, we, we post episodes and um, it's always a, a lot of fun. So before we go, Dave, do you have any last things you want to say? Uh, yeah, I just like to say, you know, it's been, I've, you know, Andrew, it's been really, it's been a joy working with you. And I got to say, you're, you're the reason I'm even doing podcasts because I, it all started about, <laughs> what, about uh, seven or eight years ago when I came on your podcast, which was so. uh, Speak Up. Yeah. It was Speak Up for Blue. That was literally my first podcast. And then uh, after that, we did, uh, <laughs> you, you know, we started doing it. We had some real good synergy together. And, uh, uh, yeah. And I just I can't help. Uh, it's for me. It's just kind of a fun new phase of my career to be able to do this. You know, I've been been in this field now for forty years, over forty years now. And so be, the podcast and being able to actually share stories, we have people on uh, from different walks of life. It's just been amazing. And uh, I said I, I owe it all to you, Andrew, for really for kind of introducing me to this whole world. And uh, I'm really looking forward to our next uh, hundred or next thousand episodes. I am looking forward to it as well. Hey, look, on the How to Protect the Ocean podcast, I'm at over 1,600 episodes. There's no reason why we can't do it for the Beyond Jaws podcast. Um, and, and there'll be some iterations. There'll be some experimentation as we try and do different mm-hmm. things. And, um, you know, we're always trying to, to connect with with, uh, with other shark researchers, shark scientists, shark uh, conservationists, enthusiasts, you know, uh, people who bring in big productions, small productions, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's always great to to connect with a with a number of people, uh, and we will connect with everybody. And so, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much our 100th episode. Uh, it's been uh, a, Dave. It's been a pleasure for me to uh, not only do the last hundred episodes, but continue on to do the next uh, hundred plus episodes with you. It's it's going to be a yeah. lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. It's been fun so far, and I know it's going to get even yeah. better. So, um, for all those of you who have been with us since the beginning, or since the middle, or even just started this journey with us. Thank you so much for supporting us. You know, the amount of people that have been listening to this podcast and connecting with us has been a, a real pleasure. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely been a highlight of my career to, to be able to talk about sharks and, and, uh, and meet some, some of the great shark scientists that we've been able to meet. And so it's, it's a lot of fun. So we thank you uh, for sharing this episode and others and helping us grow and getting more people involved in sharks so that we can get better shark policies, better shark education out, um, it's just one, 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 uh, one cog in the wheel, right? Of this, of this yep. whole thing we call shark conservation and shark science. So, um, and of course, Dave, it's been uh, like, you know, it's, it's, I've said it before, it's been a pleasure, but you are like a giant in this, in this field. And, nice. uh, you know, I definitely don't take that for granted. And I, I learn from you each and every day that we do this podcast. And all, of course, people don't hear about our conversations after we record and the three plus hours at a time that we talk, and, <laughs> um, you know, multiple multiple times a week and it's it's always a always a pleasure so looking forward to to doing more of that uh in the future but everybody else thank you so much for listening to this episode and and the 100 episodes before that we really appreciate it dave you can sign us off this time all right okay well thanks andrew and again just want to thank everybody for for making this journey possible for andrew and i and uh i please go to our youtube channel and subscribe we're just shy of 500 subscriptions so Maybe you can help us get over 500 yeah. and uh, catch up with some of the old episodes too. We have a lot of, we're a lot of stuff now. We've got a hundred episodes and uh, again, just thank everyone for, for, for joining us on this journey. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. And Oh, by the way, and by the way, please leave any comments too. We're always looking forward to any comments. Uh, we appreciate, and we're on all the major social media platforms as well as LinkedIn. So uh, thanks again, everybody. And Absolutely. uh 
Andrew, it's been fun, and uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, we start our 101st episode Absolutely. with uh, Alexandra McInturf. Looking forward to it. Have a great day, everybody, and happy conservation. Congratulations, Dave and Andrew. We are celebrating 100 episodes of Beyond Joe's podcast. I cannot wait for more episodes to come. Hello, I am Naya from Indonesia. Again, congratulations for the 100th episode of the Beyond Joe's podcast. Keep inspiring. Hi, Dave. Hi, Andrew. This is Steve Gadur from Florida Atlantic University. Just wanted to say congratulations on achieving 100 episodes of your Beyond Jaws podcast. I'm delighted that there's so many different elasmo biologists that you've been able to talk to, and uh, I hope you have great success in your next 100 episodes. All right. Thanks so much, guys, and keep up the great work. Bye-bye. Hi, Dave. Hi, Andrew. I'm calling in to you from Fjordland National Park uh, at the end of the world uh, in southern New Zealand. Uh, we're out fishing for seven gill sharks, which I know hold a special place in Dave's heart. Uh, I just wanted to say congratulations on reaching your 100th episode, and here's to 100 more. Hey, Dave and Andrew. This is Josh Moyer. I just wanted to say congratulations on 100 episodes of the Beyond Jaws podcast. It's one of my favorite ways to start the morning. I put it on when I'm driving to work in the car, and it's wonderful to listen to the stories, the adventures, and the science of both preeminent established shark biologists and some of the best up-and-comers that the field has to offer. So I and all of your listeners owe you a debt for putting that right there on our stereos, in our smartphones, and on our computers, where we can learn about not just sharks, but the discipline of shark biology. So for that, I just wanted to say thank you, congratulations, and I look forward to the next 100 episodes. Hello, Andrew and Dave. Uh, I just want to send you all my greetings and congratulations for these 100 chapters in your podcast. Uh, I felt great and honored to be part of it, of one of the chapters, and I wish you guys a hundred more. Big hug. Hi, hello Dave and Andrew. Congratulations, a hundred episodes of Beyond Jaws podcast. Uh, it's Lindsay Marshall here from Stick Figure Fish Illustration. Um, it's no surprise to me that you guys have come this far. Uh, you're both fascinating to talk to, great people. Um, there's no shortage of awesome, interesting, inspiring people in the shark and ray world. Uh, it was a privilege to be on one of your episodes and I've very much enjoyed listening to all, all the rest of them. Um, and also I think, you know, Dave won't stop talking, so I'm sure you'll be doing it for a, another hundred. Uh, congratulations, well done. Hi Andrew, hi Dave. This is Jalen Myers coming to you from Townsville, Australia. I just wanted to personally congratulate you on reaching 100 episodes of Beyond Jaws. It is an incredible achievement. In those 100 episodes, you've brought on so many amazing voices from the shark science field. And I speak for myself and I'm sure everyone else who listens, this has really helped us understand the amazing complexity of shark science that's happening right now and the champions who are making that happen. It has greatly helped with networking and just gaining some perspective on future career paths. Without Beyond Jaws, I wouldn't have such direction with where I'm going today. And it's been such a pleasure listening to your show. Hey, Dave and Andrew, uh, congratulations on your 100th episode. Um, to me, that not only speaks volumes about your dedication to the field of study, but science communicating in general. Like, uh, I think everybody needs a good science communicator in their lives. Um, I've certainly been on the receiving end of that, um, ha having both of you. But when Dave and I um, first worked together back in 2020 on Land of the Lost Sharks for Shark Week, um, that time... Uh, sparked an obsession. Like I went home from that sh shoot and bought four copies of your book. And um, I have taken that obsession into absolutely every animal show and wildlife show I've done since then, including like eight or nine shark weeks since then. Um, and um, it has been um, just wonderful knowing you guys. I think that there is a wonderful future ahead for Beyond Jaws podcast. I can't wait to see what the next 100, 200, 300 episodes brings. Um, 
and um, just to many more. Um, nothing but the best for you guys. I am so thankful to have both of you in my life and um, to have become the shark obsessed. Um, all the best and congratulations again. Hey, Dave and Andrew. Alex McInturf here. Congratulations on your 100th episode. Um, and in honor of that, I actually just wanted to share my favorite story about Beyond Jaws. So you all asked to interview me in the middle of a training cycle I was in for my next running race. And in order to kill two birds with one stone, I decided to listen to a few of your episodes during a training run that same day you were supposed to interview me so I could sort of prepare for the questions you might ask. And as I'm sure most people know, running, particularly for me, it can be painful at times. But as I was listening, I found myself like smiling and laughing like an idiot by myself while I was on my run. And I think it put me in exactly the right headspace for our interview. And as a result, I had such a blast chatting with you guys. So what I've learned from that is that folks should really just listen to Beyond Jaws on more runs. Congratulations again. And I look forward to the next 100 episodes.